So who's used jQuery? Who is doing web applications without doing jQuery? Why? Okay, jQuery makes it so much easier. It handles a lot of that cross-browser problems that you face. It doesn't fix them all, but it handles a lot of them. Done. You don't have to do anything. Um, it also makes going through the DOM and traversing that stuff a whole lot easier. Please use jQuery. Um, we're not going to see a lot of jQuery, but we'll see some jQuery syntax because jQuery UI is built on top of that. Um, you're going to see a dollar sign, which is a shortcut to say, use jQuery. We're going to see that in the code. You can download it from jQuery.com, and of course it's hosted on a CDN, so hopefully your users already have it in their browser cache. So jQuery UI is a bunch of UI widgets built on top of jQuery. It allows you to get some really cool effects in your web applications. Again, it's all open source. Go to jQueryUI.com. We'll see that briefly here in a moment. It too is hosted on the CDN. So how does this work? You write things in HTML that you want to happen for your web page. Surprise! Right? Then jQuery UI takes this stuff when your page loads and it runs this through the jQuery UI factory <coughs> which you don't ever have to worry about unless you're going to write your own plugins and stuff for jQuery UI or, or enhance the widgets in some way. You don't worry about the factory. It just happens. And it spits out this widget. The widget consists of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Something that hopefully we're all familiar with. If we're doing web development, if not, why are we here? So there's a whole bunch of... I don't know if we can turn off the front lights or not, can we? Does that screw up your recording back there? Okay, there we go, that helps. All right, so there's a whole bunch of widgets in, in jQuery UI. There's like an accordion control, there's a date picker, there's a dialogue, there's a menu, there's a progress bar, a bunch of other things. And there's other interactions you can have, like you can have drag and drop inside your application. You can have sortable things inside your application. And then there's different classes you can do, like you can hide and show things. I want to hide this div, for example. You can do that with jQuery, but with jQuery UI you can say, hide the accordion, or hide this page, or hide some object or widget that we've created. So it does a lot of stuff for you in the UI, and you don't even have to worry about it. So when you look at a widget, there's things called options. And you define these declaratively when you set up this widget. There's methods. You're going to call it to do something hide, show, and there's events. What happens when something occurs? When it shows a widget, what do you want it to do, for example? And you write JavaScript code to handle that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at jQuery UI. And I know it's going to be hard to read back there, but um, we're going to look at uh, five controls in jQuery UI uh, just to kind of see how they work. This is very, very introductory level stuff. So let's start out first of all with the dialog. So here's a simple web page. We're going to just show that dialog. And there it is, a dialog control. And what can we do with that? We can take that and we can drag that around the screen. You can see that we've put some text in the title. We can say we can put text down in the the uh, display area of that and we can actually close that dialog also. So how do we do that? We're just going to do a view source, and then we're going to try to change this text size to something bigger. Oops, control plus, right? All right. So let's see how we do this. Um, I've got some text to a CSS style sheet just to add some nice styling. We add a J, we have to call the jQuery library. Here's some CSS for the jQuery UI to give it the little X and some other things. Uh, we're calling modernizer just to be safe. And we call the jQuery UI JavaScript file. So I'm not going to go over that again because it's going to be the same for every one of these examples for that part of it. So let's come down here. So here's the div that we're interested in. We have a div set up with a title 
And simple text on that is their title. We're going to make it hidden so it doesn't actually display when we load the page. By the way, IE does not honor that. We'll see how to get around that. And then here's the text we want down in the body of that dialog. So how do we get that to show? So we have some jQuery code down here. We said when we click the button to show the dialog, set the options on the dialog declaratively. So we say auto open is true, so it says when you show yourself, auto open. We pass, we call jQuery here. We say grab this ID, the, whatever object has that ID, and assign this dialog function to it. The dialog function is declared by jQuery UI and pass the options that we've defined to that. The only option we've defined at this point is auto open is true. That right there is the workaround for IE to get it to hide the div. That's it. And we have a dialog. So let's go back, take a look at that. So I have a question. Yes. Can you, um, if you just use the IE workaround, do you also have to specify hide hidden? No. Okay. So you can just use that one. You can just use the, the IE workaround if you want to. Yeah. And that works. As far as I know, all the browsers are going to support that. All right. So let's look at another example of a dialogue. It's a little different. We've got some text here. Enter a username, enter a password. If we save the data, it's actually going to error out because I don't have anything on the back end to capture that. Um, but again, we didn't do anything to get this movable components. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we change this one. Okay, so all the stuff up here is what we've seen. The interesting stuff comes down here. So here is our dialog. Here's our div that we've set up with all the stuff. It's simply HTML. So whatever HTML you put in there displaying the dialog will be shown. And here's where it gets a little more complicated. When we click the button, we're telling it to set up our dialog. Here's our, set our title. We want the width to be 500. Auto open is true. Now let's define what the buttons look like. There's a save data button. And when you click that button, we want to call back to the server, pass this information back to it, and then close the dialog. So it's going to make an AJAX call back to the server at this point. Here's the AJAX stuff that we set up for it to handle the AJAX call back to it, the server. If that is successful, and you notice that's again all declarative. The URL, what data we want to pass, everything else. What happens if it's a success? Right? Or if it fails that call, we'll get an error. Here's the cancel button. The cancel button just says, just close the dialog. Okay, that happens. It's too, too low level for a lot of people. All right, questions on, on the dialog control? Pretty simple. Anybody been using jQuery UI? This is old hat for you then, right? Okay. So let's go on to our next example. The accordion control. Really simple to set up so that we get this kind of expanding capabilities in our application. All right? <laughs> It's funny, it's got a bigger laugh here than it does at .NET conferences. <laughs> um, again, it's because it's just HTML for each one of those, I'll call it a page because I don't know what to call it. It can display whatever HTML you put in there. So how do we set up an accordion control? Find the plus sign here. This is actually my older laptop and all the keys are in a different location. So. All right, 
So we set up a div, we give it an ID, we set up what the header is, and that's the text display at the top of the accordion page. Okay, so if I come down here, that's the text that displays here. And you set that up with a header, and then the following div right after that is what gets displayed in the page when you show it. And however many of these you set up in that same combination is, is how many pages you get on that accordion. So let's look at the accordion itself. We tell jQuery to take this object, make it to be an accordion. We set the height style to content, which means each page should be styled just exactly the right size for the content that it displays. Then we say active false and collapsible true. You have to have that combination to have all the pages collapsed when it displays. Otherwise, by default the first page is displayed or you can tell it to display a different page. Simply give it the page number that you want it to display. Now if you had to write all that out yourself, holy moly, no thank you. All right, date picker. So we have a kind of a reservation system here, right? What city do we want to depart from? Where do we want to arrive to? And then what's our departure date? We've all seen these. Right? So you go in, you pick your departure date. Um, oh, let's leave on uh, um, Wednesday. And from there, we're going to oops, return. Oh, wait, the return didn't do anything. That's because I have it tied to this button just to show a different way of doing it. Now notice here that our return date cannot be before our departure date. Kind of makes sense. And we forced it to accept that for us. You also notice we had two months being displayed in there. Let's come back and look. We can go month to month, back and forth, and so on. So how do we make our calendar control work? All right. So the first thing we did uh, was the input for the departure date. We give it an ID of depth date for departure date and then return date for their other one. Then we have some jQuery code says take departure date and assign it to be a date picker. Show the button panel of true. So when you say show button panel, that's these buttons down here. Done and today by default that's what you get. I believe you can change that but do not quote me on it. Oops. The number of months we want to display. The minimum date, I said zero. That means the minimum date is today. You can put in a specific date or you can say something like 12, which will go 12 days in the future, or minus 14, which will go backwards 14 days. So on select, this is when the user selects a date, what do you want to happen? And it passes in the date that they picked as the parameter. So in this case I'm saying go find the return date and the date picker of that return date and set the minimum date option to whatever date they picked. So the return date I said pretty much the same thing. Number of months is true. Show on button says don't display until they click that button. Here's the image to display and those images come as part of the jQuery UI download. So you don't have to go out and find your own images. And if you theme it, the themes come down with the properly themed buttons to go with that. And we'll show theming here in a minute. Button image only is true, so just show the image on the button and no text. And minimum date is zero. That's so that initially the minimum date is zero because what if they pick the return date first before the uh, departure date? So that forces them they can't return in the past. There's no DeLoreans involved in this example. Okay, is that pretty easy to do? I think so. 
All right. Let's look at a button. There's a number of different button options we get in jQuery UI. Um, the first one's simply a toggle, and it's a little hard to see with a projector, but it's changing the effect of that button. Oh, you can see that. On and off. So it's kind of like a checkbox type thing. It's just toggling it on and off instead. Here's button two. Check out this button. We have an icon here and a little drop-down icon over here. And when we click that, we get a little menu down here. Oh, I didn't show this one. Let's go back. Let's show the, the source on this one. How we did that. It really is a type check, check box. Okay. And there's the code to do that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the other one we just saw, button two with these icons and so on. Okay, so I think the code's all up at the top on this page. Okay, so here's the button. We defined some divs with the buttons and another and a, an ordered list with the items for the menu. Then our code is find the open new button, and it gets a little trickier here. Take that button, display text, and display an icon. And here's the icon to display, and again, those come down as part of the jQuery UI download. When you click that button, in this case, we're just going to display an alert. Now go to the next object in the DOM, and make that a button, don't show any text, but just show an icon. So this is a little drop-down arrow button next to it. When you click that one, traverse the DOM and display at this position whatever it tells it's in there. And when they select something in there, hide it. And now, whatever that object is from this, which is the button that says, the, it was the original button, the open new one with the text, traverse down again and hide that menu. When they click, make it a menu or hide it, and then make it a menu. So that doesn't show an ordered list, it turns it into a menu for you with simply that menu option right there. It's, it took me a while to work that one out. So, display the text here, don't display this text, and then hide that as a list and just make it a menu. This is really good for toolbars and that sort of thing. Okay, And finally, drag and drop. I made this really easy. I just have some divs that I made draggable. And I can drop them anywhere. You can define to say it, I can only drop in a specific area. So that if you have a, a certain div you want to be able to drop that into, you can force the users to drop it there. And all I did there was I assigned a class of draggable to those divs. and then set up the jQuery UI method that said draggable, change the cursor to a move cursor at this location. So if you look, watch the cursor change as I move it. Oh, I, I have to mouse down on it, there we go. So it looks like a drag and drop. So that's, that's our venture into jQuery UI. Um, here's one of the pages there, the resizable page. If you go up to their website, so it shows you how to do resizable things. You get a view source on that, so you can view and see what the source is, so how did they do that. Then you can set different 
examples, like I want to animate that in some way. You can see how you see the outline of it as it goes and so on. So there's really good examples up at the site. The other thing they have here is this themes. It's called Theme Roller. And it's pre-built themes for you to go in and you can theme your site with or you can create your own. So for example, you can go in here to this gallery and you can say, I want this theme. And it shows you what it's going to look like. Right? There's all the icons that come with it. It has kind of little examples to show you how it's going to look. You can get tool tips and all kinds of other things. And then you find the one you like, you click the download button and it downloads the JavaScript, the CSS, the jQuery UI files, everything you need to apply that theme to your site. Yes? So last time I used that was been years, you couldn't, you couldn't load a theme, you could only like create one. So if you like had one from last year and someone said make something a little different, you kind of had to start over, you couldn't you couldn't like take your own theme and load it into there, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you couldn't like just tweak a theme, you could only create new ones. Yeah, they don't really let you tweak a theme up there. Um, you can do a roll your own, so you can come down here and say, I want you know, my background color and textures to be this, and I want the color to be something like that. So you can kind of create your own in there too. Well luckily no one ever changes their mind. So. Yeah, I know. That's what makes this job so boring. You know, it's the same thing over and over again. So you can create your own theme in there and then download it when you're done. Yes? I think, I'm not sure, but I think it might, when you download a custom theme, it has a URL inside the style sheet that if you put in, that will load up that theme. Really? No, I don't know. I haven't played with it to that extent. I'm not. So awesome. I'll, now I'm going to have to look and find out. Um, that would be great if it does, because that would make it a lot easier. Yeah, it's really hard to... I work in a corporate environment, so we pretty much, you know, it's not like this customer wants this theme and that one wants that one. We just, what our customers, what we give them, they get, pretty much, unless it's public facing, and then marketing says, this is what you're going to use. So we're pretty locked down on that customer side. The other thing is, if I want to do a theme, I can. You know, I just kind of make it look good, and it's good for internal people. They don't care as long as it works. All right, let's come back to here. Um, let's talk a little bit about Widgmo. Widgmo is uh, created by a component called Comp Component One. This is actually Widgmo. This is kind of their logo right here. Um, there's actually three versions. They just changed all that, so I haven't got the slides completely right yet. There's actually three versions. Uh, there's Widgmo Open, which is totally open sourced. It's absolutely free, and it's only a subset of what they offer. The two others you pay for, but it's built directly on top of jQuery UI. So you don't have any of these proprietary libraries that you have to deal with or anything else. It's 100% open source if you go with Widgmo Open. Here's the widgets in Widgmo Open. An enhanced accordion, an enhanced calendar, enhanced dialog, enhanced menu. You get a pop-up, a progress bar, a slider, a splitter, tabs, a video player, radio button decorators, checkbox decorator, a drop down decorator, a whole bit, a whole lot of other things. There's your licensing, MIT or GPLv2. If you want the really, 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 really cool stuff, you pay for it. There's two versions, professional, which is everything in open, and, sorry, yes, and enterprise, which is everything in open, plus a web-based spreadsheet. So if you have users say, I've got to have Excel on the web, it's not everything in Excel. Even Google Docs hasn't duplicated everything in Excel. But you can get a lot of stuff, and that price, that's the pricing at the end. That's per developer. There's no distribution fees after that. The cool thing is also, no matter which version you get, it's also hosted on CDNs. So it's possible that they can get that loaded in their browser cache and not have to load it up again. Here's a bunch of other things that you get. If you buy this, um, light boxes and galleries and carousels and a tree view control and upload controls and, and a bunch of other things. Um, and it uses charting. So if you need to do charting, these are SVG graphics. So they scale on anything and work on any of the browsers. Enough of that. It also has Knockout support. So if you're using Knockout JS, out of the box, you get support for it. Knockout JS uses MVVM model so that if you want to do binding to objects inside of there, when I move this slider, I want this text box to change type stuff. So you get live data, and it's optional. If you don't want to use Knockout, you don't have to use it. And it uses breeze.js, so you can get client-side caching 
on stuff too if you need to cache data client side, which gives you rich queries, you can track changes, um, and a bunch of other things. And the other thing about this is it understands mobile out of the box. Typically, if you're doing mobile, you're going to load jQuery UI for the desktop stuff and jQuery UI mobile if they're on a mobile device. Widgmo knows about it out of the box. You don't have to determine where they're at, what type of a device they're on, and load the appropriate JavaScript library. All of that you get for free in Widgmo Open. So let's take a look and see some of the enhancements we get with Widgmo. Let's look at the enhanced dialogue control. And I've here's the exact same dialogue we saw before. I did two things. I applied the Widgmo style sheet and I called the Widgmo JavaScript library. Other than that, it's the same. So what you see here is you get this nice little resizer down here. You get these little buttons. Here's a pin button so I can pin that. I can no longer move that dialog. Um, I've got a refresh button that I can tie into. So if I have data that I'm displaying inside that dialog, I can click the refresh button. It can go back to do an Ajax call back to the server, refresh the data that's displayed in the dialog. I can expand and uh, roll up and roll down that dialog. I can minimize it or I can maximize it, or I can restore it, or close it. So what did I have to do to get that functionality on that dialog? All right. So you see, I loaded the jQuery and jQuery UI libraries just as before, but I also loaded this Widgmo open library. And I called it locally instead of a CDN because I never know what kind of internet access I'm going to have at these events. Um, I added the same style sheets as before, the site and the, the jQuery UI style sheet, and then I loaded the Widgmo open style sheet to get all those other things. So what did I do before down here? The only other change I made was I called Widge Dialog instead of Dialog. Other than that, the code is identical to what we saw before. Let's look at that other dialog. Pretty much the same, except that this is simply from the CSS to style this. Again, we get resizers and we get a little roll up control, and it was just as easy as before. in that all I'm doing is I'm calling somewhere which dialog instead. Where is it? It's in here. Trust me. There we go. Which dialog. That's it. And it, it supports the same options as the, the jQuery? Yes, it supports the same options and more, obviously. For example, um, here's all the buttons that go in the caption. Right? Obviously, that's not going to be in jQuery UI. Pretty comprehensive. Let's look at a couple of the others. We're not going to look at every one of these, but we're going to look it up a little. Let's look at the accordion. The difference here is now the accordion goes horizontally instead of vertically. Okay, it's the same we saw before. And the difference is I called Widge Accordion. I told it expand direction was right. Oh, the event was mouse over. So I didn't even have to click. It's a mouse over event on this one to expand it. Okay. The last one you want to look at is a calendar. It doesn't have a date picker. It has a calendar control. So we have to treat this a little bit differently to make it work. Um, I did not put a button assigned to the return date on this one. If you notice, it's styled a little bit differently. Um, but it basically has the same functionality that we had. You can add different functionality if you want. <coughs> So uh, what I had to do was called Widge Calendar. 
I set the month columns to two, which is the number of months that the display set the minimum date. The display date for what is I want displayed. Pop-up mode, auto hide is true. Um, selected dates change so that when they change the date, what do you want to happen in there? So it's really just a known where do we want it to display at. So it took a little bit more work, but there's some other functionality that we can get in there too. So that's the Widgmo controls we want to look at. There's the Widgmo site, so you can go up to widgmo.com, and if you fill out the cards, one of you could walk away being the proud owner of fresh bits of Widgmo. Okay, we'll draw that right at the end. Questions on anything we've talked about yet? Okay. I've got five after here. All right, so that's good because we only really have one more control to look at, and that's data tables. Again, this is a plug-in for jQuery and jQuery UI. Again, it's open source. It supports jQuery UI theming, so if you use Theme Roller, it will support that. You download it from datatables.net. Here's the features that this will give you. Variable length pagination, on-the-fly filtering, multi-column sorting. Um, you can have your data source to fill this from a DOM, from a JavaScript array, an AJAX file, or server-side processing. And there's plugins for the plugin. So you can get autofill and editor so that uh, you can edit right on the row. Um, different table tools, column visibilities, you can turn a column on and off, you can allow the user to reorder columns, you can fix the header so as they scroll the header stays at the same place, row grouping and so on, GPL and BSD licensing. Um, so let's look at this one. All right, so to start with, here's just a simple page with just an HTML table in it. I haven't done anything but pulled the data in, displayed it in a table, because this is what you get out of the box with HTML. All right, and here's all of our data. I had enough that we can sort it. So let's look at what it looks like in data tables. Bam! Data tables. So we can show X number of entries per page. Um, we can go previous and next, and you can set up paginations. You can have, go to page one, two, three, four. I haven't done that in here. You can, one moment, you can sort by column. You can search, so I want to search for everything in USA. Boom, it filters that table for what's loaded in memory and searches that for you automatically. So anything that's in that table you can search for because it searches for the text. Question. Is it pretty easy to hook this up so the next and previous buttons actually submit an API call to like a server or something? Or would you have to build your own next and previous buttons for that? I haven't done it for that so I cannot say. So the question was can, can you hook this up so as I click next and previous it would submit to the server? Maybe you know. Um, I think this is the one I've used and it wasn't too hard to do that either. Yeah, I think you can because it's pretty open on how it works. Okay. Um, so how did we make this happen? How, where, what caused this magic to occur in that big, ugly HTML table? The little man inside the computer. <laughs> we saw him before, right? <laughs> I hope that's not the little man inside my computer. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's too involved with his philanthropy now. That's it. Well, I loaded the, J the data tables JavaScript file. Other than that, that's it. Yes? Uh, the data tables is not available in the open version? Data tables is not a Widgmo product. Data tables is free. Oh. Datatables.net is where you download it. We're done with Widgmo. We saw Widgmo and then we moved to data tables. I'm sorry that wasn't clear. Okay. There is a data grid available in one of the pay for products with Wichmo that does more than this. But that's a heck of a lot of stuff for free. I use this all the time to display data to users. Yeah. Load the JavaScript file, make sure you've defined the ID for the for the HTML table, and then 
Just call that. You're done. And if you want the pagination to say one, two, three, four, it's really easy. Again, it's declarative, just like we saw before and everything else. I don't have an example of that, but it's very, very easy. Okay, so let's come back to here. And we're done. Questions? Dan. Um, if you want to put, like, or in terms of recursive uh, use of those <coughs> calls, if you, like, wanted to put a table and a tab. Absolutely. If you want to put a table and a tab, sure, go ahead. Okay. Go for it. It doesn't care. Anything else? Yes. Is there, do you know if there's any sort of plugin that will let you basically use these sorts of widgets without having to write JavaScript? So in other words, put something inside the HTML markup instead of... No, and I'm not aware of anything to let you uh, avoid the JavaScript. Not it's with jQuery it, UI. Not with jQuery UI. It's kind of the way it works. Do a lot of that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not, it, doesn't do, have, it doesn't have as many different types of widgets, but it will work with, with a lot of stuff. Right. Actually, even with dynamic HTML, surprisingly, I'm not sure exactly how to do Okay, why don't I collect those cards for those of you who want to get in the drawing for a Widgmo. And we will draw your names out. There's got some blank cards here. Let's pass them over here to the end. We'll collect them. And one of you, I'll just draw the winner, and then, and then component one will be in contact with you. All right, let's give it up for Craig. Anything else? All right. We'll do a random sort. Did you learn about the random sort in your CS classes? No, no, the random sort. Sort in a random order. <laughs> How does that scale with Ben? It's just random. That's why it's a. We have another one. That is the joke. Thank you. <laughs> Christopher Boren. <laughs> Somewhere I've got a pen so I can write that you're the winner. <laughs> okay, I think what you actually win is the ultimate, so you get a whole bunch of .NET controls, but you also get Widgmo as part of that. Okay? Because they're really a .NET component company, but they even Microsoft's going open source. Right. How many of you knew that one of the largest contributors to Git is Microsoft? Okay, tells you something about what they're doing. All right, thanks folks, have a great day.